how to get your cactus or plants to bloom. This is an actual series, the first part, and I'm starting it off here. My name is Dave, and we're at my home, and we are going to check out some blooming plants and cacti and talk about how you can get yours at home to bloom. We're looking at a profuse cacti flush here. Kind of a proof is in the pudding. You definitely want to hear about tips and tricks from a guy that can do it himself. So I'm going to show you how you can get your plants and your cacti to bloom at your house. So cacti normally blooms in the spring and through the summer. And this is the time of year that in their native environment, they would receive a lot of moisture. So the first thing you need to get your cacti or plants to bloom is buds. And the buds are going to signify that the plant wants to bloom and it has the energy to do so. And after that, the plant will produce actual blossoms. And once those blossoms get a little bit larger and you see green life within the buds of your cacti, then you know that you actually will receive those flowers. So giving your plant or cacti the additional moisture and water that they're going to need to support all of these new flowers is really necessary. And the moisture that you give them should be consistent. We don't want to just flood them and have them sitting in water. And we don't want them to go through dry, stressful periods while they have the buds on them. Now, some people do say that stressing your plant can produce a flush of blooms. And this can be true. Stresses can be done by root size and root stress. This particular cacti is growing in a, oh, 15 gallon about pot, possibly 10 gallon. And being grown in the ground, they can bloom a little bit sooner and easier, but sometimes being inside of a pot makes them want to produce quite the flush. It can also contain the nutrients that we're going to speak of. Here's a small little tiny cacti that's also putting out a flower. Just to show that we don't need huge plants to produce huge blooms. So let's go ahead and walk around and check out some flowers and talk about different types of fertilizers. Uh, the front of this bottle will notice three numbers. This is an organic nutrient that we're looking at. And the three numbers that we're seeing, the first one signifies nitrogen. Uh, the ratios that we're seeing are NPK. And the N stands for nitrogen. The P is in the center. It stands for phosphorus. And the K is at the end of the NPK ratio, the third number. And that stands for potassium. Here's a beautiful flush of blooms happening underneath my Trichocereus burgessii monstros. And these cacti do not often bloom. Here we've got a Copiapoa and it's in full flower mode. Beautiful, rare plant. And we've got some Echnopsis growing through the cracks here, loaded with buds. And some aloes pushing some flowers. So I'm not an ad, I'm not gonna throw out any brand names or anything like that, but we will talk about this NPK ratio. The nitrogen in that ratio helps plants stay dark green. It helps them push out new growth. The potassium is what we're going to focus on. The potassium is the K and it is the last one and it produces plants health. It's almost good for the plant's immune system and it can also help with vivid colors. 
and it can help with producing the actual buds in the very beginning. The phosphorus, which is the middle number, is known as the flower nutrient. So that high phosphorus is going to give us a huge flush of blooms, whereas that potassium is gonna give us a strong color and strength for those blooms to actually produce fruit. Now, one of the other nutrients that can help a plant to produce colorful blooms and really bring your cacti to its fullest potential is sulfur and magnesium. Magnesium can also help produce a healthy dark green cacti and sulfur just really pushes brilliant colors. We can see this salmon queen back here is just a gorgeous vivid pinkish salmon splotches of yellow in the center. <laughs> Uh, but this red, we can see how strong it is. And it's not faded. We don't have m much tones of pink. And it's not quite as orange. And the sulfur and magnesium help with that. So this nutrient that we're looking at here, grab it, is not a full-bodied nutrient. It really... On the back, we can see our guaranteed analysis, and that shows that it has phosphate and potash. It shows where it's derived from. This is an organic fertilizer, and it's derived from fish. And I would consider it an additive because it's not a full-bodied fertilizer. We'll get a look at a full-bodied fertilizer. This is a singular part to a series of full-body fertilizers. And this is going to have nitrogen, potash, along with micronutrients such as calcium, copper, iron, manganese, zinc. A lot of, lot of good nutrients in there. So having a full-bodied plant nutrient is really important to your plant's growth and health. But having that phosphorus is going to push out a huge amount of blooms. And having that potash is going to help it actually produce its fruit. Now, most of the cacti we're looking at cannot be self-pollinated, meaning that its own flowers cannot pollinate one another. It will require the pollen from an actual different cultivar of cacti. These two cacti we're looking at are clones of one another. And these, the pollen from one can't actually pollinate the other. It's going to require the pollen from a totally different type of clone. Seed grown cacti can pollinate one another. So if you have two different cacti grown from seed from the same mother, they can both pollinate each other. And we're looking at an Eve's needle here. And here's some blooms on the Eve's needle. Interestingly enough, these fruit actually have areola spots where they can grow pups like these have, and the plant can be propagated from its own fruit, which isn't extremely common. All right, well, I hope you guys are enjoying the first part series. I hope to make the series fun. Uh, hopefully in the future I can do some with a little bit more comedy. Spark a few laughs out of you guys. But I really just want them to be educational and spread some knowledge that I have. And I also really enjoy learning. So I'm hoping that you guys can put comments down that helps everyone learn, including myself. And hopefully the comments on these will just be total gold. I'm going to attempt to link videos for future parts of the series. And if you guys want to comment on suggestions for future videos, I'd be really stoked on that. I'm aiming for the second video of this series to be about 
snails, slugs, and bugs. And after that, I'm going to go into how to chop and cut cuttings off of cacti and how to root cacti. We'll be talking about transplanting cacti that are ready to be pulled out of their pot like this bad boy right here. And we'll be talking about cacti health, strength, and anything else you guys want to add to this series. You just let me know. Uh, and it is not only limited to cacti. If there's any other plants you want to hear about, um, including the devil's lettuce, just let me know. I'd be happy to share what knowledge that I've gathered through the decades of growing plants. And I'll even share a bit about myself if that's what you guys want to hear. Well, cheers, guys. I hope everyone has a kick-ass day. And I hope that you drop something in the comments to let me know if I'm doing this right or if there's anything you want to see in particular. All right. Adios, amigos.